Hey, I'm Trey and I have another story for you today. It's just another reason why you should protect yourself from serial killers. If you're interested in stories like these where seemingly normal people wake up one day, snap, and kill everybody in a five block radius, then subscribe to my channel. Also hit the like button and notification button so you can be reminded of new content that I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Also, I'd appreciate if you leave your responses in the comments section, I'd love some feedback about the videos. Well, if you're ready, let's get started. John Bachman was born in 1941 in Illinois and grew up in Chicago. When Bachman became of age, he volunteered for two tours in Vietnam as a Marine infantryman. He later became a heavyset man and had always worn thick rimmed glasses, which earned him the nickname Bottles by his friends. After he completed his tours in Vietnam, he once served as a police officer in Homewood. Shortly after, he married his wife by the name of Gertrude. Her nickname was Trudy. On July of 1964, together they had three children together, which all turned out to be daughters. During those years, Bachman worked as a security guard part-time and did electrical work for Honeywell. People that closely knew him described him as a rather controlling man. In July of 1970, Sergeant Dean Pence, a 28-year-old police officer in the city of Flossmoor, was found murdered near the Presswick Country Club in Will County. He had been shot with a 38 caliber revolver. He was a longtime friend of Bachman. It was believed that he was killed because he had a love affair with Bachman's wife. When the police brought Bachman into questioning, he denied any involvement. The detectives found only circumstantial evidence and had no witnesses. Bachman's wife at the time provided no information that would aid in the investigation. Thanks a lot, lady. Despite Bachman becoming the lead suspect and even being arrested, the grand jury would not indict him. Mr. Bachman was allowed to walk free of all his charges. In 1984, his wife, and Bachman were inspecting some equipment in their garage in this town of Madison. According to Bachman, his wife suddenly tripped over a stove, then she ignited some gasoline on herself, set herself afire, then she panicked. She started flailing her arms around, apparently causing herself an injury to the throat, which caused her death. I'm sorry, but if I didn't read this, I wouldn't have believed it myself. It sounds to me like the dog ate my homework type of alibi. An examination by the coroner proved that the story was false as the autopsy revealed that his wife had first been strangled to death then subsequently burned. Now that makes more sense. It was alleged that prior to her death Trudy had recently told Bachman that she wanted a divorce from him. You didn't need to be a Sherlock Holmes to figure this one out. Bachman, who claimed that his wife's death was accidental, was acquitted by the Cook County judge of murder. Where did they get this jury from? The planet Mars? This might have been a coincidence, or maybe not, but back in 1988, Bachman's defense attorney, Fred Apari, was convicted in federal court of paying bribes to Cook County Sheriff Office. It was testimony from the county coroner, who actually didn't complete the autopsy of Trudy, that shed doubt on the prosecution's case. Years passed following his first wife's suspicious death and he had retired from the police force. Bachman met a twice divorced woman by the name of Valerie. She was an energetic customer service rep from the company 3M. She had four adult children at the time. They took a liking to each other and in February 1991, the couple married. Valerie was aware of John's past but believed that he was actually innocent of all the claims against him because she loved him and was invested in their relationship. Now the exact opposite can be said about Valerie's adult children. They believe the accusations of Bachman being a murderer of his first wife. In 1995, Bachman and his second wife went on vacation to St. John's in Antigua and Barbuda, registering at the Royal Antiquan Hotel. In May, of that year, John took his wife to the roof of this eight-story hotel where he pushed her off. The fall cantaloped her head along with crushing every bone in her body, killing her instantly upon impact. According to witnesses, Bachman didn't make any attempt to save her from falling. After further investigation, employees later stated that Bachman had requested a room for two for the first three nights, 
but then only one person for the last night. He was like, room for one, please. Don't ask me about my wife. She's about to take a flight. Immediately after, Bachman was arrested and held without bail in prison. During his investigation, he explained that his wife had accidentally fallen while they were tossing love letters to each other. I don't even think that he believed that story. The coroner, however, declared that she had been pushed to her death. Now that makes more sense. At his trial, the jury unanimously voted and found him guilty of murder. Sentenced to death, Bachman was escorted out of jail where Antiquans were cursing at him and cheering for his eventual death sentence. In May of 2000, shortly after his final appeal was rejected, Bachman died by suicide in the Antiquan jail by hanging himself by a bed sheet from his cell window bars. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and also notifications so you can be reminded of content that I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Please leave those comments in the comment section as well about the video. I appreciate the feedback. God bless and stay safe.